their veins. Mackie and Judd on Score North and scorenorth.com. Scoop episode. Who needs Judd Zolgad? Judd Zolgad went down to Vikings practice, so uh, the succession plan, the Kellen Mond, if you will, is already in play, Darren Doogie Wolfson. I'm stepping in for Kirk. Uh, yeah, I, I, man, Judd's probably really upset that I just compared him to Kirk Cousins, although his bank account probably wouldn't hate it. I don't think I don't think I don't think you have any gripe with the bank account of, of Kirk Cousins if he was Judd Zolgad. No, he would not. Good to see you, Declan, as somebody who's now in his 40s. Yeah. So you're way younger. So you may not understand this reference, but in many ways, it's entirely possible. Let's have a review in about 30 minutes. We can figure out how well you did, but it's entirely possible, knowing how good you are at this, that Declan <laughs> Judd Zolgad is Wally Pip, that you yeah. are Lou Gehrig, that yeah. you are that good. So when talking about a succession plan, yeah, this is great. So yeah, Judd's out at TCO Performance Center, Declan. Lots going on out there. I hope to make it out there on Thursday. Although, okay. how about this? I just stumbled into a conversation with Derek Falvey. Oh, twins nice. President of Operations. That likely will take place Thursday morning. So that may mess with my plans to attend Vikings minicamp. Although, Declan, I don't know where you stand on this, but like oftentimes, especially on social media, people ask me, hey, how does, speaking of Kellen Mond, how does Mond look? How does right. so-and-so look? My comeback more often than not is, Ask me August 1st when the pads go on, when the full pads go on. Right. Now, can he spin the ball? Sure. Like we have right now, I mean, Joe Schmidt is representing us on the TV side out there. We have a photojournalist, Jeff Briachi, chronicling all the happenings. We can shoot the entire minicamp practice. So when I go to the office later today, I'll watch the film. I get to watch, and nice I get man. to watch it multiple times. So, like, I have a working knowledge, but, like, with them not in full pads – I can only glean so much. So, like, there's a lot to like, but, like, let's circle back to those questions come August. Let's not yeah. ask those questions May and June. Yeah, when, when Clint Kubiak gives you a call to sit down and watch the tape with uh, with, with Kellen Mott, I'm sure you and him can definitely break it down. Uh, a couple quarterbacks just absolutely slinging it. Uh, Dukes, let's start here. Obviously, uh, yesterday, the big news, Daniil Hunter getting his contract restructured. Rob Brzezinski, the wizard. I mean, my God, just give him to the keys of the city. I think the dude could apps. I know we got a good budget surplus here on, on a different angle in, in Minnesota. At the same time, this guy can absolutely rework a budget. He gets Daniil Hunter happy. It gives the Vikings more flexibility to possibly pay him, I know, in March. And now, right before you and I just hit record, the news came down. It is official. Sheldon Richardson back in the fold with the Minnesota Vikings. So what can you tell us on the Daniil Hunter and the Minnesota Vikings cap room front? Rob Brzezinski is a ninja. It's a reminder, yet another reminder, going back many, many years, Declan, why so many other NFL franchises have tried to get Rob the heck out of here, offering him big-time money, big-time incentives. You know, but Rob is firmly entrenched here in the Twin Cities community. His wife does unbelievable work in the community. They've adopted multiple kids. Like, this is home. So Rob has never been tempted, even though the money has been there if he wanted to leave. But, yeah, you think about it. So Daniil reworks his contract. He doesn't get any new money, Declan, but you're right. Like, being in contact yesterday with some people that know Daniil, also some people that were down at Exos in Arizona where he's done a lot of his training. Like they tell me he's in phenomenal shape. Like when Daniil talks to us, it won't be today, but I imagine now who knows, maybe he declines and waits until training camp, but there is a possibility that Daniil will talk to us either Wednesday or Thursday, or even if it's in July, when he does talk to us, it's when not, if he'll talk to us at some point here, you know, before, you know, the first preseason game, he is going to tell us, that this is the best he's felt in a really long time. That now many, many, many months removed from that very serious neck surgery, but not having the wear and tear of playing all those downs in the 2020 season, that he feels really, really good. Now, they are holding him back today. He is just watching minicamp practice from the side. There's really no reason to throw him right into the fire they just they want to evaluate for themselves exactly where he's at from a physical standpoint. But I'm just told he feels great. So essentially, you're right. What this has done, you know, in you know, very you know, minuscule terms, is Daniel has set himself up to get paid big time money next year when the cap goes significantly yeah. up. That that he feels like the way you know his body is is responding right now that we will see the Daniil Hunter we saw 
2018, 2019, that Daniil feels like he is going to have a monster year. And if he does, and the Vikings see that, they are going to pay him. The Vikings have a history of taking care of their own. At that point, two years left on his contract. The Vikings redid Adam Thielen's contract with two years. That Daniil Hunter will get the big payday, the big, big payday, come next March or next offseason. That that is coming. But the way they reworked the deal with him getting this money now in terms of a signing bonus, that does offer him some insurance in the event something catastrophic happens. If if come the first day of training camp, you know, he blows out his knee, tears his Achilles, the neck acts up, he does get some of that money forwarded to him. So the Vikings, sure. if they wanted to just cut him, kick him to the curb, he now gets that money accelerated in terms of, of a signing bonus. But what the Vikings did by doing that is create some additional cap space. So before that move, the Vikings, Declan had, according to NFLPA records, that a few of us in the media have access to. I looked the other day, the Vikings were at $11.8 million in cap space. Well, with Daniil, the reworking of his deal, they create another close to three and a half to $4 million. So the Vikings had about $15 million in cap space. So they go ahead and sign Sheldon Richardson. Sheldon is back, played over 900 snaps last year for the Cleveland Browns, a good defense in Cleveland, a good team. So he's physically in a really good spot. Like the Vikings did have some interest in Geno Atkins, there is a history. Mike Zimmer, Cincinnati. Paul Gunther, who's now on the Vikings staff, Cincinnati ties. But Gino is coming off a of surgery. Gino, this second, now he's a couple weeks away from being cleared, but this second, Declan, Gino Atkins is not cleared for football activity. You know what you're getting in Sheldon Richardson. He was a rock-solid player here in 2018. So the Vikings get a deal done with Sheldon. I mentioned on the Scoop podcast last night, one-year deal. We now have the money. Somebody texted me. I think our buddy Tom Palacero tweeted it out before I could get to the keyboard. One year, $3.6 million of base with, I'm told, pretty reachable incentives that, that the money's going to get over $4 million, that it could get upwards to four three five four four. But bottom line, he gets his three six. Now, Mary Kay Cabot, who does a great job covering the Browns. I used to do some fill-in work on Sirius Satellite NFL Radio. We used yeah. to have her on on Saturday mornings. She is really, really good. She has covered the Browns for a really long time. She reported on Monday, Declan, that the Browns made Sheldon a really nice offer. So it sounds like he just decided after the Browns kicked him to the curb that he said, screw you, Cleveland. You didn't want me at the number you had me at. I'm not coming back there. That, in fact, he took less money to come back here to Minnesota. Mm. Maybe not significantly less, but he Fair. took less money to come back here to Minnesota. So yeah, Sheldon Richardson, as we speak on the practice field, wearing number nine. Doogie, what can you tell us too about Sheldon's? Obviously, I know we just had the one season here in Minnesota. What, that was 2018. He was brought in here just for one year, um, bounced around a little bit. When, I know he was at Cleveland last season, but clearly he, he likes Mike Zimmer's defense. And I also got to believe after watching what happened last year in the, in the shortened pandemic season, the limited OTAs, the no training camp, Nothing in person. I got to imagine Zimmer and even also Andre Patterson to that factor and, and obviously co-defensive coordinator his son and Adam Zimmer are probably thriving knowing that they have depth, not just a, a, on a good defense, but veterans who they get to work with and not rookies who basically are going from college with no pro days and no no training camps right into now training camp with veterans like Patrick Peterson, Sheldon Richardson. I have to imagine Sheldon coming back had a lot to do with just the veteran presence and what he knows in Mike Zimmer's defense. Yes, and the need to generate a pass rush from the interior. And you brought up Andre Patterson's name. Andre has a lot to do with this move, that Sheldon and Andre have an incredible bond. Yes, you can mention Mike Zimmer's defense, but I'm right. telling you, like Andre, like tip of the hat if you're a Vikings fan to Andre Patterson. Andre Patterson had a lot to do with Sheldon Richardson coming back here. But yeah, I mean... I'm not going out on a limb to suggest, Declan, that Mike Zimmer was incredibly pissed off with how his <laughs> defense performed last year, that that was the outlier. That was the mirage. That's not the trend. Mike Zimmer coaches really good defenses. He did not want to go into this season with uncertainty interior of the defensive line. Look at the defensive tackles from last year, the guys that, that played a lot of snaps, Jaleel Johnson, Shamar right. Stephan. Now look at who they have with Dalvin Tomlinson, with Michael Pierce deciding to play after opting out last year. Now with Sheldon Richardson. So 
big time jump up in experience, in talent, interior of the defensive line. Then you look at the cornerback position, Cam Dantzler, Jeff Gladney playing all those snaps last year. You bring in Patrick Peterson, you bring in Bashad Breland, you bring back Mackenzie Alexander. They're just, there's this trust factor, right? It also speaks volumes of, and I know, you know, our good buddy Patrick Royce scoffs at, at this term, but the culture that yes. they have built there at TCO Performance Center, that guys like Alexander, Stephen Weatherly, Sheldon Richardson wanted to come back, right? There is something to be said about that. So, hey, the pieces are in place for them to make a significant run. It's an uber-challenging schedule. Make no mistake about that, right? When you're yep. playing the NFC West, when you're playing the AFC North, one of your extra games is against the Cowboys. You know, if, if Dak can survive the entire year, I mean, Dallas has a lot of talented players, you know, so you have to play Dallas, you know, and, and you played them last year, but they didn't have Dak, you know, so if Dak can stay healthy, you've got that 17th game against Justin Herbert and the LA Chargers out there, you know, so you have the extra road game. So make no mistake about it, Declan, it's a really challenging schedule. But they feel like, and I mean, heck, they felt this way even before the Sheldon Richardson re-edition, that they could make a significant run this year. But yeah, expectations are incredibly high from the ownership group, the Wilfs on down, that there is an expectation that this is a double-digit win team, that they can make some noise come January. That there's also a history, by the way, of Mike Zimmer in odd-numbered years, right, 2015, 2017, 2019, here in 2021, that Mike Zimmer can lead this team to the playoffs. So, yeah, this is just – it's another good move. They've managed – you know, let's not forget the the salary cap dipped. They've yeah. done as good a job of managing the salary cap going back to March as any team in the league. Doogie, what else can you tell us about? I know Kellen Mond just signed his contract, did the third-round pick. Um, what, what are we at here for Vikings draft picks? Are the majority of them signed? Are there still just a couple more left? Or are, as, as Rob Brzezinski and Rick Spielman been able to sign most of this uh, rookie draft class so far? Yeah, so Kellamond is a done deal. I tweeted that out this morning. Chris Thomason of the Pioneer Press had some initial steam, but I'm able to advance it and say, hey, it's it's now a done deal. You know, we're debating some language in the contract. It's not like there's a whole lot of leeway for these agents to negotiate <laughs> these rookie contracts. They still have... Uh, some guys, Wyatt Davis, for example, right, Declan? Like, we foresee – well, maybe I don't want to speak for you, but I foresee yeah. – I know many fans foresee him starting. Like, come that game – what is it, September 12th, week one at Cincinnati, uh, I foresee Wyatt Davis being a starting offensive lineman, that he will start at right guard. Well, technically, he's not signed yet, but, like, is there anything to worry about in that regard? No, they have a couple other draft picks – that they still need to get signed. But I wouldn't worry about that. The next order of bid business truly is wanting to extend Brian O'Neill, wanting to extend Harrison Smith. I checked a few days ago. I haven't checked in the last 72 to 96 hours, but going back five-ish days, I'm told uh, talks have not picked up, at least on the O'Neill front, that, that those talks likely will pick up. They may even pick up here this week into next week. A lot of the Viking staff will take off for a while after July 4th, heading into July 4th weekend. Mm -hmm. You know, then those first couple weeks of July, that's a good time for, for Viking staff members to get in vacation time before right. things ramp up with training camp, you know, and, and all the logistics that go into, you know, just finalizing all training camp plans. You know, training camp will start, I think it's July 27th, you know, but you need to be back in the building by, you know, July 18th, July 19th, whatever it is, to start finalizing all the training camp plans. But a lot of guys take vacation you know, July 1st until, you know, the 15th or whatever it is, you know, so those O'Neill contract talks may pick up here this week into next. If not, they'll pick up there in mid-July, but that is something the Vikings are aiming to do. O'Neill wants to be here long-term. So the Vikings will at some point here in the near future work diligently to extend Brian O'Neill. They also do want to extend Harrison Smith. So those would be the, the two orders of business that Vikings fans should keep an eye on here as training camp starts here in late July.